a lot more than just dips with these things. This is a multifunctional design. So when I was designing these dip bars, I wanted to be able to do a lot more than just dips with these. I wanted uh, adaptability, compatibility, extendability, all the abilities. Okay, so let's take a quick look at just a small sample of some of the exercises that you can do with this design. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to build this, okay? However, this portion of the video is for DIY Fitness Club members only, okay? But it's super easy to join. All you got to do is go down below, hit subscribe. Oh, wait. Okay. Hit subscribe. Now turn on notifications. Okay. Okay. You're in the club. That's it. You subscribe, you turn on notifications, you're in the club. Okay, quick overview. So we have essentially three layers with this design. You have your handrail, okay? This is pine. It's the standard in stock handrail uh, available at any big box hardware store. Then you have four blocks made out of two by four. And then of course this beam, which is also made out of two by four. Each beam then has this notch, which we'll cut out. Okay, and the notches allow you to basically click it into place on your J-hooks. So the next step is we need to measure how long we want these two boards to be. Right now they're both five feet long. They don't need to be that long. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure two inches from the edge of this J-hook and go ahead and mark it. Okay, and I will do the same thing to this side. Okay. And we'll do the same thing to these two. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark the width of all four J hooks. So before we start cutting, uh, one last thing, we're gonna determine if this is level. I can, you, I already know that they're not. I have two different styles of J-cups. 
this style sits a little higher uh, than this style. If you have four of the same exact J-cups, you probably don't have to worry about this. I'm gonna go ahead and use my level, and I know that if I raise this up one and one sixteenth of an inch, I'm pretty dang level. Therefore, all we need to do is between the notch's depth and the height of the blocks, now I know 1 and 1 16th is the target I need to hit to make them level. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and mark. This is the back one, this is the front one. So the reason why I prefer designing these for the J-hooks instead of the safety bars is because by using the J-hooks, it'll allow you to use th this as your preacher curl attachment while taking the other one, laying it across your safety bar and giving you a platform to rack your bar when doing preacher curls. Now that we've made all of our markings, let's get cutting. I'm gonna cut a half an inch deep notch here and a half an inch deep notch here. I'm gonna be cutting out this boundary and this boundary. So again, I've already set my power saw to a half inch depth. So let me put on my safety goggles and we will start cutting. Now that I have these two marks, all I have to do is keep cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting until I have one solid notch. Okay, you can see what I'm doing here. Now I'm gonna take my rasp and I'm gonna smooth this out. Okay, so we have our first notch. I'm gonna take this as an opportunity to take this down to my power rack Make sure it all fits, and if it does, I'll proceed to making my second notch. All right, so we've cut our two notches. I've already checked. They fit the power rack perfectly. Now it's time to chop off this excess and start cutting it up into blocks. Okay, so we've cut our beam, we've cut our four wood blocks, and we've cut our handrail. Now it's time to bring it all together. So, we have our beam here. I measured and marked the dead center of the beam, okay? Then I measured and marked six and three quarters inches out from the center, which will give me a nice position for these interior wood blocks, okay? 
These other two, they will go at the very ends of the beam. Okay, now closer look at these blocks. I also measured and marked the center of each block. Okay, the reason I did that is when we put this on, okay, it gives me the capability to scribe the position of where I'm going to drill with my spade bit. Okay, so all you have to do is follow this middle line on your block upwards, right? And that's where we'll drill. Okay, that will give it that will give us the ability to sink our lag screws right in the center of this handrail through the center of the wood block and into the beam. And there you have it. Okay, so now we're gonna pre-drill so that when we run those lag screws through the handrail, through the wood blocks and into the beam, nothing gets split. Okay, so now we're going to pre-drill through the wood block and partially into the beam. Okay, here's the last step of pre-drilling. So we have pre-drilled through the handrail, through the block of wood and partially into the beam. To make sure that you get a full six inch on your pre-drill, just go ahead and line that up or use a ruler, measure six inches down, and then mark it with a pencil. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and take your bit, okay, and then Line it up with the depth that, on the mark that you just made, okay? When you've done that, you can use a pencil on your bit, okay? And I know that if I drill down to that mark, I have drilled enough. So here's a simple hack. I'm gonna go ahead and take a piece of electrical tape, okay? And just wrap it around my bit right where I marked it, okay? That way, when I drill, okay, I know that as soon as I hit the edge of this electrical tape, I have drilled deep enough. Uh, if you don't have a drill press, this is actually a pretty useful little hack to get uniform depths when you're drilling with a hand drill, okay? so. I'm gonna go ahead and now drill all four positions up to this uh, mark right here. Okay, now I have pre-drilled all three layers. Okay, so now it's time to glue the blocks onto the beam. So apply your glue, place it in position. So the hole that you drilled through the block and the hole you drilled into the beam need to be lined up. So just take a screwdriver and put it through and if it goes all the way through and into this hole here, you know you got it lined up. Okay, so now, now you can clamp it. Okay. Now remove, now it's clamped, you can remove your screwdriver and proceed to the other positions. 
stick the screwdriver through, and now we know it's lined up. So now I can go ahead and clamp it. Okay, now because of that little screwdriver trick, all the holes are aligned and now we just have to wait for the glue to All dry. Alright, so the glue is dry, so now we can take off the clamps. Okay, so if you plan on painting this, go ahead and do that now, and then you can drive in your four six inch lag screws. If you don't want to paint, go ahead and take this opportunity to go ahead and start driving these in right now. So once you've finished driving in your lag screws, it's time to take the finished product down to your power rack and let's test it out. Now watch how fast I set this up. One and two. That's it. I cut these a little shorter than I cut these. These are longer. Okay, let's make sure it's level. Okay, it's level. Okay, so we're done. However, there's three optional enhancements that I'm gonna cover right now. Enhancement number one, when you're doing dips, if it feels like they're too wide, you can bring it in, make it a little bit more narrow by simply adding some wood on the back of the two by four. So I, I cut a little wood block out Okay, one right here for this J hook, one right here for this J hook, and it brought it in one inch. Okay, so again, it's a inch, I guess tall from this perspective, inch tall, it, it's as long. The edge of this two by four to the uh, bottom of the notch, and it's as wide as my notch. Okay, same exact proportions down here. So, when I put it on, it brought it in one inch and it just feels a little bit nicer when I'm doing dips. Optional enhancement number two. We're gonna put some wood blocks here to fill this dead space uh, that exists between the J-hook and the dip bar so that you can't roll these, right? It'll provide a little bit extra stability and a little bit more safety. Okay, so this is what the block will look like for this guy here, okay? I could give you the dimensions, but that's not really gonna help you. You're gonna wanna build this specifically for what you got going on right here. So I'll tell you this though, it's as tall as my two by four, okay? And I put a 45 degree angle cut on it because the J hooks, both sides, are 45 degree angles. So that's what it looks like, okay? So basically just measure that and fill in the dead space. I also have two holes to put my screws in. I'm gonna put a little glue on this and screw them in. They're also exactly as wide as the J hook, okay? Other one, same exact thing, okay? So make it as wide as your J hook, make it as tall as your two by four and put a 45 degree angle cut. And then you really only have to measure this part here. Okay, so measure on your power rack the distance from the edge of your two by four to the hook itself and then measure the angle of the hook which is probably gonna be 45 degrees. On this side, because I put this wood block back here and brought it forward, these are obviously a lot thinner, okay? But again, it's a 45 degree angle cut. They're also as tall as the two by four and they are as wide as the J hook. So these wedges will go right there and this one will go right here, okay? And we'll put some glue on these four and screw them in and now it'll be much more stable.
So you can see this dead space is completely filled in by this block. Okay, and now it's rock solid. It can't be knocked out of place. Same thing on this side. This dead space is now filled in with this block. Okay. Allowing for this too to not be knocked out of place. Okay, so optional enhancement number three. When using these on the safety bars for a variety of reasons, one being a utility bench, another being a place to rack your bar when you're doing preacher curls, blah, blah, blah. One thing you're gonna want is stability on the safety bar. So since we put these blocks on to fill that dead space in the J hooks, you can use those as basically anchors. So because I have those blocks on this side of this safety bar, right? This, the, the, neither one of these can slide this way. In other words, right now, these could technically slide off the safety bars in this direction, right? So, in order to mitigate that happening and to really lock it in, I have cut just a little block of wood. It's the width of my two by four right same thing on this side and it sits at the edge of the two by four against this safety bar right so there's going to be like a channel right here for the safety bar to sit in that way neither parallel bar can slide off that way or slide off this way Okay, so a little closer look at that, right? Now, since I have these blocks on, which filled the dead space, okay, and I just add this end piece, right? These safety bars, one will fit right here in this channel, while the other one fits against this block, okay? So now that I've done that, these can't slip and fall off. 